So we take a manifold, and this is not conformally diffeomorphic to standard SN. So in that case, if we look at the solution set, let's say alpha is any constant, we look at any solution set where u is a smooth function, positive, and satisfies the equation. So this implies u is equal to less or equal to constant on m. So this depends only on, uh, on f, gamma, m, g, and that constant. So what is this f? Uh, the remote control. Francesco, that, that's re remote control. Uh, ah, thank you. The, oh, the, oops. The, the thing to, okay. But it's okay. It, it's okay. No, I, no, no, I can go without it. It's all right. Okay, so just do this. I, I just do you that. You go like that yes. in a moment and sure. go grab the person. No, no problem, yeah. No problem, this is good enough. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I happen to have this. So, <clears throat> So, uh, so on the manifold, this AG is the shortened tensor. So this is the gamma. It's, it's a cone. A cone, something like this. So, and uh, so F is a smooth function, continues up to the boundary positive inside, there around the boundary, and partial derivative in each lambda i is positive. So this is ellipticity. So this gu here, meaning it's a conformal metric, so this means we use this conformal metric, insert, <coughs> so f is equal to one. So the eigenvalues of this new shortened tensor lies on the surface f equal to one. So alpha is any given constant. So these are all solutions to the problem, to this equa equation. And uh, <coughs> it is added that Ricci is bounded from below. So, so, so we, we, have, we, we are trying to solve this conformal metric equal to one, this equation. Yeah. So this, the last restriction, so if f is sigma k, for k greater or equal than n over two, so this, so this implies uh, existence. So this result gives existence for all k in this range. So uh, because in that case, this condition is naturally satisfied. If this 
short tensor in the cone, automatically this will be satisfied with the right-hand side actually equal to zero. However, for k less than n over two, this, this is an additional assumption. So this gives, so that would not give the existence for the problem. So in this uh, regime, so earlier results, this statement includes earlier results by by Alice Chang, Gersky, and Paul Young for k equal to 2 and equal to 4. And also this include also so for k bigger than n over 2. So So let's first, so we, we describe uh, the proof. So first, we start from a proposition. It's a known, uh, or this is a certainly known statement. So. So, so this is, let's say this is N. Yeah, this is N. And this would be the boundary of N. So you take a point here. You take a point here. Then you go to the boundary. This is the shortest distance. So if one assumes that the boundary of this N has mean curvature bounded from below by this constant, by a constant. So like a very small ball in Euclidean space is going to have larger uh, mean curvature. So, so, we, we, so this mean curvature is with respect to the inter inner normal. So if this is bigger than this alpha, then the distance is controlled by, let's say alpha equal to zero. Let's, let's not just look at that. So, so this is one over C zero, thanks. This is one over C zero, so you see if alpha is fixed, if C zero is large, then the distance will be small. Distance will be small. So we use this to control things in the proof. <coughs> so, well, the 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 proof uh, one can prove the is one can have a proof. So let's give a proof. This is a proof of this statement. So let's say, let's take X. Let's call this, let's make a line like this. This is the shortest geodesic. So let's say gamma of T goes from zero to A goes to n. So then n is going to be the distance. And uh, well, we take the shortest geodesics and we parameterize it by arc lens. <laughs> and then want to show 
that A should be less or equal to that number. So one can take E1 as the derivative there, take a vector, take this direction, and uh, one also take the other n minus one in the tangent space. So take orthonormal. <clears throat> then parallel transport along gamma. We are going to have an also normal frame going that way. So then let's say for each I, <coughs> we take a curve, uh, take a, another parameter, we like we move it around, so we, uh, t is still in zero a, and we move around s. So, so that gamma i zero t is identically equal to this gamma t, this will lie on the boundary. So when we, we move this curve around like this, and keep the t that tip on the boundary. And end point is fixed. So if we take such a curve, because it's the shortest distance, we know that DDS well so denoted by that, <clears throat> so it's at so this is the first derivative. And uh, because it is minimizing, so we have d square, ds square, s equal to zero, if you calculate the length, and then you calculate the length, yeah. This is a dot. So this is a lens. Then you sum it up. You sum it up. So this should be, each term should be greater or equal than zero because it's minimizing. So it's a, it's a minimum. Second variation should be like that. Well, then you just make a computation. You will see that it's going to give you this. This is a computation. So this is a computation. You will see that. And then uh, you have inequality because you have some, so use the mean curvature has some bound, and also the Ricci has some bound. You insert it. So then 
we optimize the right hand side. We optimize the right hand side. So we, we can take f of zero is one because it's a, and uh, f a always equal to one zero. So you make the right hand side. Uh, uh, as small as you want, uh, as you can, you will pick up the best F, insert it, and you will get the bound. So that proves this uh, proposition. So So we want to prove this one. We want to prove this. And uh, we make a contradiction argument. So prove by contradiction. So namely, if it's not true, then there exists a sequence of conformal metric. So it satisfies the equation. And uh, the Ricci is greater or equal than this. And alpha is a fixed constant. And the maximum of ui goes to infinity. Without loss of generality, xi will go to a point on M. So, so we want to rule out this picture. <clears throat> so to rule out such a picture, so usually one tries to know first know things about uh, blow up points and so on. So we will first prove actually there can only be one blow up point. <clears throat> so step one is that inequality. So step one says the ui, this sequence of function, is actually less than a constant. You measure the distance with respect to the original metric to xi. So you go minus n minus 2 over 2. For all x belongs to m minus xi. So this certainly imply there can only be one blow up point because away from this xi is bounded from above. And we know much more than that statement. So the So the lemma for that is so is the following. So suppose I have a situation that I have a sequence of point yi. For the time being, one can just think of this yi as this maximizing point. So suppose I have a sequence of yi, and uh, in within radius. So let's say ki goes to infinity, there's a sequence of number. So within this radius, a shrinking radius, which is dictated by the height, so 
So th this is determined by the standard bubble blow up somehow. So this ki goes to infinity. The speed that goes to infinity is much slower than the speed ui of yi goes to infinity. So let's say ui of yi goes to infinity. And uh, we know that the supremum, the ui here, ui here in the ball is bounded by a constant ui yi. So c1 is a positive constant, fixed. So even though it's not a maximum point, but inside this ball is almost a maximum point, modular uh, fixed constant. So we have, if we know there's a situation like this, then the conclusion is we know the volume we measure with di and in this ball, the ball we draw there, and I uh, smaller. There exists ki prime less than ki, but still goes to infinity. So then, for ki, this will go to 1. Yeah. So this bore, if looking at the gi, this bore already taking almost all the volume. Or the model. The remaining volume will be going to the arrow. And in fact, it will, in the proof, it will show, see that the top will actually go to the volume of the standard bore and also, the, of course, the bottom. And actually, the diameter of the whole ball also goes to the diameter of Sn. So this, from the proof, one will see that. So so we rescale So this is this piece is m this is yi, so we take the tangent space like that. So our coordinate is there. So we know that this is, we know that this is less than c1 for x less than ki. And this ki goes to infinity. So. <coughs> So that's the assumption here. So inside, we had that. And this is the good uh, scaling. So the equation will be maintained, uh, except the metric will be stretched. It will be dilated. <coughs> So this metric is the rescaling. So this will go to G flat. Because we are taking from a point and in very high norm, locally, uh, locally uh, everywhere. <clears throat> so this will go there. So therefore, 
So then once we have upper bound, we can have gradient bound. We only describe in, in Rn, but that proof actually goes to remaining manifold. So uh, we have gradient bound, and then we have a second derivative bound. And here, uh, our f is concave, so we have C2 alpha bound uh, by evans Krilov, and then we have shoulder estimate. So we have all the bound. So ui tilde is bounded on any compact subset. So therefore, this ui tilde is going to go to some u star tilde, and this will be positive, and this will be very smooth, C3, C4, C5, C infinity actually. So we have all the, we have a convergence. So, so therefore, this is the limiting profile. Uh, and uh, then, uh, and then this will satisfy the equation in Rn. And we know this is actually, there's a Liouville type theorem. This can be classified. So we actually describe not only on Rn uh, a solution, if it can be approximated in enlarging balls, uh, it's also classified. So anyway, so by the Liouville type theorem, so one can write down this <coughs> limit profile. And because of the normalization, you will see that the A star is bounded above and below by constant, and X star, the center, will not move too far. These are universal constants. <coughs> so, <coughs> so, so that, that says, so this is a, a uh, a standard way of doing a blow up. So somehow, if you have a, say, you have a maximum point here, say everywhere around, so we just take this ball. So then we can always do this process if one is able to do the rescaling, having limit, and have a Liouville type theorem. So whenever you know that, you know that in this very, very small ball, you have very, very good control of your blow-up uh, solution. The ball is shrinking. <clears throat> so the, now the question is what happens outside? Well, so here we know we have a ball. We have a ball. This is like Ki prime Ui yi to this. This is a shrinking ball. So that corresponds to when we take a standard sphere, because this corresponds to standard sphere. You take this raised to this power and g flat. This is standard sphere. So this is a standard sphere. And uh, here, we cut off a little ball. We cut off a little ball. So this boy is shrinking. This little sphere is shrinking. And, uh, and outside here is there. So this is your uh, GI. GI. So it's like that. So then the, the outside, and minus this outside, will be something you know, coming out from here. So in principle, this piece, one can get uh, very large, one can, uh, in principle, is possible like that. But we have that proposition. The, the, this very strong control tells us that this little piece the, will be small. This will be, it will be large. Because, the, let's say this, because this, this little piece, the metric, everything, is like this one. Very, very, so we have very, very strong convergence. So, so, so this will be very, very large, and that 
And we know the Ricci has a lower bound. We know the Ricci has a lower bound. So then that proposition says the diameter of the remaining will go to zero. So the diameter of the remaining will go to zero. Will go to zero. So and the, the diameter of this remaining, so you have something outside, out here, okay? So that piece, the diameter is shrinking to zero. And also, we have a Bishop theorem using, again, the Ricci. So it tells that this volume will also go to zero. It's less than constant epsilon i n will go to zero. So outside this piece, will have diameter and volume all go to zero. And that lemma follows. That lemma follows. That this lemma follows. Yeah. So actually, you show that both the top goes here, bottom goes here. And so <clears throat> then why we have such an inequality? So, so if that inequality is violated, then we are able to produce, we can take another point. So this is the maximum of that quantity. So xi is the maximum of ui. So then we are going to have xi sitting here, and we are going to have xi tilde somewhere else. And uh, you take a maximum point, you have this. So this will, this distance, this power, so uh, then it will give you a scenario, you will be able to draw a ball like this, draw a ball like that. So this will can serve as your yi, and that can also serve as your yi. Okay? You will be getting a small ball around it, which will take <coughs> a whole volume. So you have two, two volume of m, that's a contradiction, because the total volume should be sn. So in each more ball, you get an M, so that's a contradiction. So what I'm saying is <coughs> then this statement uh, follows from this level. So, <coughs> so now the picture is uh, your UI on the manifold will have one maximum point, XI, X i is here, and uh, we have a control that this u i x is bounded by distance x to x i, and <coughs> two over a uh, minus two over two. So that's the control. Okay? So it's a way it's bounded. So once we have zero derivative control, because whenever we have an upper bound, we are going to have 
gradient estimates, and then second derivative, and so on. So uh, therefore, here we can these estimates can be can go to log, let's put log. So this is minus k. k goes from one to, this is our uh, gradient and uh, uh, second derivative estimates uh, in the scale. We have, we have it in this scale. So we have this estimates. So in particular, this gives Harnack because for k equal to one here, uh, the gradient log of that is bounded, so anything away, you take a piece, ui has hana, so it's max and mean are under the proportional. <coughs> so then we show that this ui so this xi will go to x infinity. Let's say x infinity sitting here, it goes there. So anything away from x infinity, we are going to see that the limit will be zero. Will be zero. <clears throat> so this is actually just because uh, we know that, we already know that if you circle a fixed distance outside, the volume should go to zero. The volume means ui to the 2n over n minus 2 dvg. That's the volume, okay? And in this range, so inclu including here, we'll go to zero. But we have Hanak. So ui max and min are comparable. So integral goes to zero means ui itself goes to zero. So that shows this step. So the picture now is anything away from here, so ui will be going to zero. <coughs> so So we know that this ui goes to infinity here, away will go to zero, and there's a hana everywhere. So the max and min are comparable. So now look at, so let's pick up a fixed point here. Let's take peak not equal to x infinity. So then look at vi of x is ui of x divided by ui of p. So because of the Hanak, so this is bounded in above and below by positive constants away from x infinity. And also uh, we, have, uh, we have derivative estimates, so the gradient, so we have derivative estimates. So away from x infinity, these derivatives are bounded for vi. Yeah? So therefore, this says that the vi, after passing to subsequence, will converge to v infinity, which is positive. And this is in C11. Look, m minus x infinity. And uh, this convergence is C1 alpha. All background, yeah. For every alpha, less than one. Because we have up to two derivatives control. So, so this, this function go to zero, but because of Hanak, they are all comparable rate. I just normalize it. I get Vi, it will converge to V infinity. 
So this v infinity will satisfy the equation we looked at before, and it will be along the boundary. So it will the the eigenvalues of the Schalten tensor will belong to the boundary. So, so of course, all, along the way, uh, there is an issue that V infinity is not C2. So whatever we talk about eigenvalues belongs here. We should interpret as uh, viscosity sense. And if we talk at Ricci curvature uh, of GV infinity is greater or equal than zero, apply some sort of thing like Bishop Gromov later on. So we mean that this, this V infinity can be approximated from VI, and those theorems applied to VI can be passed to that. So we are not really saying, so all those theorems hold for a C11 metric. But that passage is, is not uh, difficult. So I will not uh, bother with the smoothness of the infinity, I'm trying to say. I'll just apply everything on that. So then this shows uh, this step. So we know that the limit, when we normalize the limit, will end up with here. So, so solutions of such things are relevant in studying this problem. And uh, step four is to show, to give some description of this V infinity. So there exists a constant which is now negative but finite such that the limit exists. So this function v infinity, it, when it goes to uh, near this x infinity, so when multiplying this uh, like fundamental solution, this, it has a limit. It has a limit. The limit at the moment can be zero. So that's actually an important point to address. We need to show eventually it should be positive, but first one should show that it has a limit. So we want to know what happens to this V infinity. V infinity outside are just positive function. When going to here, what's the behavior near that possible singularity. Well, the proof of that is, uh, so we know that this is the conformal Laplacian. Applying to that should be less or equal than zero on M. So this is the structure of the equation. So therefore, uh, let's call it LG. LG acting on that is less or equal than zero, and V infinity is positive. So we have this. So once we have this, so this is just a li linear statement, then we know we can define the lim inf of this is the distance from the origin from x infinity and minimum v infinity on the boundary of this ball. This is finite. And this is a linear statement. We are not using anything nonlinear. We have a nice uh, elliptic operator here. So the lim inf along this going to the center is finite. It's finite. But step two, so we have this estimate. We, we have gradient log v infinity. 
is bounded by distance to x infinity minus 1, this gives you Hanak. So that, that gives you a spherical Hanak. So you take here, you take a circle, then on this circle, the max and min will be comparable. So it's a consequence of that. So then that means the limb soup is also finite. So the limb soup will be finite because on every sphere around it, the max is controlled by the mean. And we already know that lim inf is always finite. That's a general result. So, but for, for this statement, we need to show that this A and capital A are the same. Namely, if I look at this quantity, I, x infinity is at the center, I take balls going in on each sphere, the max and min, I want them to go to the same thing. I shouldn't have oscillation. I don't want oscillation. So this is ruled out by an argument I showed, uh, already showed before. So need to prove A equal to A. So if A bigger than A, I'm running out a out of time. So then we are going to have balls shrinking and we have two points oscillate. So then we normalize it to uh, we normalize it to a to a unit size picture and by passing limit we end up with a solution uh, which is in, we end up with a solution, something in here. So lambda of this A, this A, we, we will end up with a, something like this, and G flat will be here, and in Rn minus zero, and then we have a symmetry result saying this has to be radially symmetric, but this carried, this carried uh, uh, oscillation on the unit ball boundary uh, contradicts to that. So we, we saw this argument actually before. So anyway, we use that argument and we will see that we actually have a limit. So this V infinity near this singularity will have this nice limit exists. So after that, it is very important to prove that this A is actually equal to, uh, not equal to zero. So, so to prove that. So to prove that, uh, we di divide it into two cases. One case is the case where c sort of corresponds to K, sigma K, case elementary symmetric function for K greater or equal than N minus two. So in that case, to prove this A positive is through a construction of a barrier function. So, and uh, for k less than n over 2, so that requires a different construction of barrier function plus a uh, generalization of Paul Levis uh, as parametric inequality. So anyway, so that will give this A positive. This step is a crucial step in the proof. It's more technical, so I'll skip. So next one, 
is to then we are having a contradiction now. So here the contradiction again we use this, this Ricci, Ricci bound. So so the so the so so the manifold is like this. This is a M manifold. So this is a closet here. Man. So here there's a point X infinity. So point X infinity. So the metric now we are going to have G V infinity is equal to V infinity 4 over N minus 2 in the background metric. So V infinity away is just positive C11. Everything is C11. And uh, near here, V infinity is like, is indeed like a constant. A is positive. And the distance So it's truly like a constant, this. So when we have this power, we have this, you put it here, that means this point is being open as a plane. This asymptotics at infinity is a flat plane. So, when, so near here, so the metric is sort of open it. Open that. And outside is truly an Rn because of this. If you, you put a flat, you will see Rn. So, so, so this is why it's very important to have a precise control of this V infinity near singularity. <coughs> so, so now we know that the Ricci of this V infinity is greater or equal than zero. So that means the vol volume of G V infinity with bore, this is, this is bore of V infinity bore, and divided by B R N R will be non non increasing which is greater or equal than zero. This is uh, uh, Bishop Gromov. You can compare uh, to standard model. This is Rn, so the volume will have this. However, limit, well, R goes to zero, this quantity is clearly equal to one because near the origin, everything looks like Euclidean. So the important thing is actually when R goes to infinity, this quantity is also one. Because, so here inside is, you, you, you take any point here, yeah. you, you measure large bore, this part is compact, so it has finite volume. So when we take larger and larger bore, the only thing you see will be a large bore of Euclidean space. So you are going to see one. So both n is one, so that means this is just identically equal to one. Yeah. But this, but this, but the bishop gromov theorem has rigidity part. So, so this is monotone if it's just identically equal to one. So the rigidity part says that M minus this with respect to the metric. This is going to be isometric to Rn and G flat. So that, that means the original metric Mg is actually conformally equivalent to Sn and G canonical. And that ends the proof, because start from the beginning, 
we are saying that the manifold is not Sn. So, I will thank you for your patience. Yeah.